After the success of the arcade game Donkey Kong in 1981, Nintendo set about to create a home video game system in Japan. Designed by Masayuki Yumiera and the R&D 2 division, the Famicom would launch in Japan in 1983 and would quickly become a huge success. Nintendo of America President Minoru Arakawa decided to bring the console to America, calling it the Advanced Video System. In 1983, they began negotiations with Atari to market the system, but the deal fell through after Atari discovered Donkey Kong running on rival Coleco's Atom computer. Shortly afterwards, the North American video game market crashed, forcing Nintendo to alter their marketing strategy. The Famicom hardware was reworked into the arcade versus system, where American gamers would first play titles like Super Mario Bros., Ice Climber, Excite Bike, and more. By 1985, Nintendo had redesigned the Famicom into the Nintendo Entertainment System, which was unveiled at that year's Consumer Electronics Show. Attempting to avoid comparisons to past consoles, it was designed to look different than anything before it. It would also include Rob the Robot and a Zapper light gun in order to market the system as an advanced toy rather than a video game. Its central processor was the 8-bit Rico 2A03 with a MOS Technology 6502 core running at a clock speed of 1.79 MHz. The processor would also handle the five channels of sound. The system would have two kilobytes of memory, a screen resolution of 256 pixels wide by 240 pixels tall, included a 52 color palette with the ability to display 25 colors at once, a series of memory mapper chips or MMCs gave the system expanded capabilities, each one more more powerful than the last. On October 18, 1985, Nintendo would release the system to limited markets in New York and Los Angeles. 90,000 systems would be sold in those two markets. In 1986, Nintendo would begin to release the system to retailers across America at a price of $180. They would sell 1.1 million units that year. The Legend of Zelda was the first video game to include a battery to save your progress. Third-party publishers began to make deals with Nintendo to create games for their system. Nintendo required those publishers not to create the same title on other systems for two years, that Nintendo would be the sole manufacturer of all cartridges, and that the publisher must only create five new titles per year. Konami created another company called Ultra in order to get around the five games per year limit. Unhappy with Nintendo's restrictive practices, the Atari games owned company Tengen began to publish games on their own by illegally creating a clone of Nintendo's 10 NES lockout chip. Some of the more well-known peripherals included the NES Max and NES Advantage controllers, the Power Pad, the Konami Laser Scope, and the most infamous of all, Mattel's Power Glove. The NES began to run out of steam in 1991, but not before Nintendo released a revamped version known as the NES Top Loader. Not surprisingly, Super Mario Bros. would end up being the best-selling game at over 40 million copies. It helps that It and Duck Hunt, which sold 28 million, were often bundled with the system. Other best-sellers include Super Mario 3 at 17 million copies, Super Mario Bros. 2 at 7.4 million, Legend of Zelda at 6.5 million, Tetris at 5.6 million, Dr. Mario at 4.8 million, and Zelda 2 at 4.4 million copies sold. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out sold 3 million and Metroid sold 2.7 million. The top five rarest games are Little Samson, Cheetah Men 2, Stadium Events, the Nintendo World Championship cartridges, and the rarest of them all is the Nintendo Campus Challenge cart, of which there is only one. The NES would be discontinued in 1995 and would sell 34 million consoles in North America, 20 million Famicoms in Japan, and 8.5 million in other regions. At 62 million systems sold, this makes it the 13th best-selling console of all time. The last official NES game was the European release of The Lion King in 1995. The last game released in North America was Wario's Woods in 1994, and in Japan it was Adventure Island 4. There are a few high-quality NES systems today that output to HDMI, like the Retro USB AVS and the Analog NT. The NES still lives on today as clever programmers continue to make new homebrew games for it. A tool called NESMaker was introduced in 2018 and would allow easier game creation to be played on actual hardware. The game hacking scene is also huge. There are dozens of hacked games for Super Mario Bros., The Legend of Zelda, Metroid, Mega Man, and more. What's it like to play the Nintendo Entertainment System? The Nintendo Entertainment System. Now you're playing with power. There's no denying the importance of the Nintendo Entertainment System. It is rightfully credited as resurrecting the North American video game market, but more importantly, it made everyone who owned it a diehard Nintendo fan for life.